Good morning, YouTube. This is Johnny. I thought I'd make a video. I made a video earlier and it, it wasn't going, it wasn't flowing. I tried to be on a flow. And it, but So I'm going to do a second try. And yeah, it is March the 20th, 2021. It is a Saturday morning. It is 9.53, sunny day here. It's supposed to get warm. This is the first day of spring. And I am waking up to another day. Tomorrow my wife comes home. She's been out in Denver for going on nine days tomorrow. Visiting our daughter Beth and her family. I'm sitting here. I sit here in the dining room because I know people make videos and they always got books behind them. But this is the best place for lighting. If I was to make videos with my books behind me, it's too dark down in the lower level. And there's no room to spread out and put cameras or anything. And I liked the dining room, even though you just see the kitchen. But um, I like the lighting here. So I'm writing in my diary this morning. I'm on page 295 for the year. 2021 and I am reading uh, this again. I've read 581 pages. I'm on chapter 31. This is part one, volume one, chapters one through 40. I'm almost coming to the end of this volume. There's two other volumes in my main study in a fourth volume coming out in the future. So I've been really enjoying uh, going through the life of Jesus Christ. And this morning I was reading in the Gospel of Matthew about Matthew the tax collector being called to, to discipleship. And it says here, as Jesus is in chapter 9 of the Gospel of Matthew, verse 9 to verse 13, and Jesus passed on from there, and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call right the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And uh, so... You, you have here the, the call of Matthew, the tax collector, to discipleship. And I was thinking of certain books on discipleship this morning that I just thought I'd show them. There's this book on the patterns of discipleship in the New Testament, uh, edited by Richard N. Longnecker. There's a chapter in here uh, by uh, Terrence Donaldson, Guiding Readers, Making Disciples, Matthew. And also, there's this book, Discipleship in the Ancient World in the Matthew's Gospel by May Michael J. Wilkins. Wilkins wrote a really good commentary on the Gospel of Matthew in the NIV application commentary on Matthew, where he goes into discipleship as it's, it's found in here. He goes into discipleship and in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, like it says there in Matthew chapter 4, where you have uh, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers called Peter and a Andrew and his brother casting nets into the sea and, and fishermen. He said to them, follow me 
and I will make you fishers of men. So he calls the uh, these men, these fishermen, to be fishermen of men. He calls them to discipleship. So he goes into that. Also, this is a new book I got a couple of weeks ago, The Servant and the Lord and the Servant People, Tracing a Theme Through the Canon by Matthew S. S. Harmon. We're called not only to discipleship, but to be servants. And there's a great chapter in here, Jesus the Servant per, par Excellence. And I have been looking, I showed you this book. I've been reading this along with Rudolf of Saxony, A Jesus According to Scripture by Daryl L. Bach. I also like this book on discipleship, Theology as Discipleship, by Kenneth A. John, L. Johnson. I've been rereading this. I, I get it out, and I, it's a very slim book. It's only maybe 185 pages. So, and I got out the fourfold gospel. I told you this book, Theological Reading in the New Testament Portraits of Jesus by Francis Watson. But one thing that struck me this morning when I was reading that Matthew account of the, it says that he immediately, Jesus passed on to him there. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office and he said to him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. And I was kind of interested what one of the comments here. It says here in this book about the call of Matthew, he followed without delay because the divine power was at work with, within him and flaming and instructing. The one who called him, Matthew, externally also kindled a spark of fervor within, attracting him and teaching him so that he would follow immediately. Jerome says, quote, The splendor and majesty of his hidden divinity that shone forth on his face could draw at a first glance those who looked upon it. If a magnet has the power to attract iron, how much more was the Lord of all creatures able to draw to himself those whom he wanted? Christostom comments, quote, You have seen the power of the one calling. Learn further the obedience of the one called. He did not resist or hesitate, but obeyed at once. He did not even ask to leave to go home and tell his family. And I was reading Robert Hawker's devotion this morning on March the 20th, and I read to you the other day from uh, Isaiah, and this is from Isaiah uh, 33, verse 17, Thy eyes shall see the king in his beauty. And Robert Hawker, this goes along with this, what, and he re, Robert Hawker writes, Who, my soul, but Jesus could be attended by this sweet promise? And who is beautiful and lovely in thy eyes but him? There was no beauty in him while thou wert in a state of unrenewed nature, that thou should desire him. Neither can any man truly love him until that soul is made light in the Lord. Is Jesus that then lovely to thee? Hast thou seen him? Dost thou now know him, love him, behold him? as altogether fair and chief as among ten thousand, then surely this promise has been and is continually fulfilled in thy experience. Has, not, has thou so seen him as to be in love with him and to have all thy affections drawn forth towards him? Does thou, my soul, so behold him as to admire him and love him above all, and so to love him as never to be satisfied without him? Moreover, thou hast seen this king in his beauty, in his fullness, riches, and suitableness to thee as a Savior? Surely, blessed Jesus, there are not only glorious and precious excellencies in thee, thy own divine person, which commands the love and affection of every beholder as thou art in thyself, but there is a beauty indeed in thee, considered as thou art held forth by our God and Father, 
and all settlements to thy people. In thy beauty, blessed Lord, there is to be seen a fullness of grace and truth and righteousness, exactly corresponding to the wants of poor sinners. Thy blood to cleanse, thy grace to comfort, thy fullness to supply. In thee there is everything we can want, life, light, joy, pardon, mercy, peace, happiness, here, glory, hereafter. And do I see, do I not see thee, thou King, in thy beauty indeed, when I behold thee as coming with all these for my supply, so that under the enjoyment of the whole I feel constrained to cry out with one of old, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he's become my salvation. Neither is all is this all, for in beholding the king and his beauty, I behold him also in love. Yes, blessed Lord, thou art indeed and most beautiful and lovely, for thou hast so loved poor sinners as to give thyself for them. And the conscious sense of, of that sense that our love to thee did not first begin, but thine to us was the first cause of exciting ours and shedding forth that love to our hearts by thy blessed spirit, first prompted our minds to look unto thee and make make thee love thee indeed. And now, Lord, every day's view of thee increaseth that love and brings home thy beauty more and more. So I thought I just read that to you it says there in matthew chapter 9 verse 9 and jesus followed, passed on from there and he saw a man named matthew and sitting in the tax office and he said to him and follow me so he arose and followed him so he saw something of the of the divinity of christ something of his divine beauty something of his glory and he followed him so I hope you're having a good, this is a Saturday, a good weekend, a good reading weekend, and I'll thank you for the comments. Until next time, bye.